Shaq-Fu The Legend Reborn is the spiritual successor to Shaq-Fu, a mediocre fighting game in 1994 featuring Shaquille O'Neal. It was developed by Big D's Productions and published by Dog Games LLC. The game was crowdfunded on Indiegogo in 2014 and reached past its goal. Despite having the same name, the two games are highly different. While the original Shaq-Fu was a Mortal Kombat style fighting game, a Legend Reborn is more of a Streets of Rage type fighting game. It's currently out for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and mobile. Our story begins in the small Japanese village of Hung Lo, where little orphan Shaq was taught Kung Fu by his master Ye Ye, as he soon finds out that he is destined to defeat Yen Lo Wang, a demon that tries to take over the world every 1,000 years. To save the world, you have to track down Yen Lo Wang and kill her, celebrity impersonating demons. Let's see, we have a uh, Justin Bieber parody, a Chris Brown parody, <laughs> a Kanye West parody, and no originality in sight. Even the boss music are uh, parodies of other songs, though to give them credit, the song parodies aren't that bad, especially the Beat It parody. Actually, most of the music is uh, a little too good. Might, might explain where all their money went. As you go through the first stage, you learn that you're able to punch, jump kick, combo attack, do a smash attack, and do a special attack, Shaq Wave. Despite the varied moveset, most of the combat is pretty repetitive. They try to spice it up with power-ups like weapons and health boosts, but I honestly didn't find myself using these much, and even when I did, they weren't that fun to use. This is where Shaq's ultimate transformations come in. Shaq Diesel and Shaqtis. When you reach one of these transformation sections, Shaq basically becomes overpowered and gains a few new abilities. With Diesel, you can throw out rapid punches and release powerful blast attacks. With Shaqtis, you... shoot spikes. It's still repetitive, but more fun than the regular sections. It's a shame that there are only a few of these short sections, since I feel like they could have done a lot more with Shaq Diesel, and especially Shaqtis. I guess the game has a bit of originality, given the transformations and cutscenes. These are interesting. They have an animation style that reminds me of those TV shows in GTA V, but on a much smaller budget. These scenes are filled with jokes, and just like the rest of the game's comedy, are extremely hit or miss. So, you're the chosen one, huh? Diamond? Candy's a little busy right now, so she sent me to take care of you. If you ever need a ride at Hung Low, it's on me. <laughs> Close the door, you bastard. I'm trying to lay a cable. Better wipe it clean, because I'm about to put my foot in your ass. Oh, Christ, toilet paper's out again. Well, at least the characters are consistently interesting. Also, Ye, Ye has a bit of a fascination for seeing Shaq in a mankini. So this is why you had me wax your rickshaw to learn the moves? Exactly! The moves! So what was the mankini? Uh, it improved posture! I've seen you looking at me when I do them high kicks. Oh, what? No! I'm just watching your technique! See? 
Interesting. While the cutscenes look nice, unfortunately, the rest of the game looks extremely mediocre. It doesn't look bad, it just doesn't look good either. It has about the same graphic style for it being on possibly the last generation of consoles when it was really scheduled to come out, but due to delays, it was pushed back and later released on Xbox One, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and, well, phones. To contrast this, the world design is surprisingly above average, with there almost always being something interesting to look at in the background. In fact, the levels themselves have a lot to look at, including tons of breakable items for health and energy, and coins. Coins do nothing and are absolutely useless. Moving on! Being as this is a Streets of Rage type game, there are constantly enemies on screen. These can be placed into four common types. The normals, the button prompts, the heavies, and the ranged ones. Everything you fight in a game is a reskin of one of these types except the bosses, making the combat extremely predictable. See an enemy with a shield? Combat attack. A demon lady? Smash attack. Rinse and repeat. Seems too easy, right? Yeah, the developers thought that too. This is why in the later stages they spam you with unavoidable hits and constant enemies. Because obviously throwing more enemies on screen is a great and totally not cheap way to increase the challenge. Alright, so guys. I got about, uh, oh, I don't know, some money right there for uh, whoever can uh, give us the... Best video game idea, we gotta go. We gotta make this game harder, kids, so let's get it. Alright, man, what do you got? We could add interesting levels and different enemy types. Okay. Now, uh... What, what do you got there, man? We could just add literal fuck tons of enemies to the screen and add DLC there where you can play as Obama. I'm going with him. Yeah, I did it. No, Mom, I said I don't want macaroni. Don't fuck me. Now, this is just ridiculous. Now, the bosses are actually pretty well done. They each have an intro cutscene, a death cutscene, tons of one liners, their own music, and their own unique attacks. While they aren't that hard to beat, it's obvious that a lot of effort went into these bosses, and I can respect that. I don't have a good transition here, so I'm just gonna start talking about the controls now. I played the entire game on an Xbox controller, and from what I tested, this, or a PlayStation controller, are better options than a keyboard or the mobile controls. However, this doesn't mean that the controls are that great in the first place. For starters, you can't move forwards and backwards in air, only sideways. This might not seem like a big issue at first, but when you're flooded with enemies that can smack you out of the air, it becomes a problem. Actually, I found it annoying to pull off most of the combo moves because it threw me in the wrong direction, or in rare cases, just didn't register at all. Usually being able to move in all directions is great, but when the game sometimes clips your attack past the enemy, it gets super annoying. The collision detection makes this game feel untested before it was released. Actually, with how much this game glitches, you'd think the entire game was untested. I understand that making video games is hard, especially when they're crowdfunded, so these issues could be overlooked if it wasn't for certain enemies having specific button prompts to damage them. Like the generic shield bearing enemy. The only hint I got from the game was to press the stomp button. I died twice before I realized I had to build up combo points and then press stomp to take him out with Shaq's size 22s. Yeah, a few of this game's gimmicks are pretty vague, like figuring out that chaining a bigger combo leads to a stronger combo attack, or figuring out that you have to jump attack these clansmen. One thing I did like was how you can throw back these enemy shots like a Hadouken. I like small gimmicks like that, as they don't add or subtract much from the gameplay, but they're just a little fun thing that you can do. Once you get about halfway into Shaq Fu, these portals start appearing. These things are basically a big excuse to throw even more enemies onto the screen. Shaq himself even gets tired of this and makes the game developer put in a Defeat This Many Enemies mini section. Stop. Hey, game designer, get down here. Yes, the shark, I hear. Stop with the unlimited enemies. That's some free-to-play crap. I thought it was a good idea. What do you think this is, Flappy Shack? 
Окей, окей. I give you something freaky fresh. This is ridiculous! So anyway, you do that for five stages, most of which have neat stage hazards like bombs or cars, murder a few more demons, fly out to a private fascist island, find out that Yen Lo Wang is destroying Hung Lo, ride back on a character reference that I don't understand, take back Hung Lo, and then it's on to the final stage, Hell. Yeah, this game has some serious pacing issues. So, after murdering the Halloween rejects, you have to fight Yen Lo Wang, where it is revealed that she is your real mother. Gotta say, I was not expecting that. For all of the terrible surprise twists thrown into games these days, this one actually managed to surprise me. Mostly because it doesn't make any sense, but okay. Sadly, for such an amazing twist, the fight is pretty underwhelming. It consists of fighting basic enemies, easily dodging her fists, and kicking her in the face with button prompts. Not gonna lie, it's still pretty satisfying. After button prompting her to death, you destroy their magic orb portal thing and find out Ye Ye is alive! Oh right, I forgot to mention that they faked his death in the beginning of the game. Yeah, it's extremely unimportant, so don't worry about it. Anyway, he goes on to tell you that Kanye is also a demon or something, so you run off to go whoop some more demon ass. Oh, but we're not done yet. These people somehow gained enough money to give their game DLC. And what did they add? What? Did you think we were kidding about playing as Obama? This DLC comes with its own character, stories, enemies, levels, and transformation. Alright, so you play as Obama who's trying to figure out who's been murdering celebrities because you're a government agent, I guess. The plot only gets worse from here. Anyway, you have to go to France in order to find the killer's next target, Kanye. Before reaching him, you'll have to fight off waves of Frenchmen for... I don't know, some political reason, I guess. With your gun and sweet kung fu fighting skills. And some French political figure named Marine is there as a boss, which, again, don't ask me why. During the first level, you figure out that you can punch enemies and combo attack them with a variety of guns. He has the same smash attack as Shaq, ooh, that rhymes, but has a new ultimate ability, Drone Strike. I get it, because Obama and drones, haha, uh -huh, yes, get it, funny joke, yes, okay. But those are all trash compared to your new transformation, Dirty Berry. While in this mode, you have unlimited rapid-firing guns, grenades, and of course, the coolest looking shades in the universe. While the shades are amazing, compared to Shaq Diesel and Shaqtis, the power is pretty boring and really isn't that fun to use. Once you find Kanye, it turns out that Ye Ye's after him in a giant robot suit because... Kanye's a demon? After beating Ye Ye, he informs you of all this information. The game makes a mediocre Batman v Superman joke here, but at least they actually got Obama's mother's name right. Ann! What? Why did you say that name? What name? Why did you say Ann? I said Ann! You're kneeling on my balls! Oh, <laughs> sorry. Anne is my mother's name. Of course, Kanye isn't actually a demon, but in fact, a clone made by aliens. It only gets worse from here, folks. We are subterranean creatures from Uranus! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny? We live inside Uranus! <laughs> <laughs> With that, you're off to save the Earth from the Uranus destroyers. Am I dead yet? I had an hour before Earth was destroyed by the <clears throat> Uranus Destroyers. <laughs> this time you fight an army of Kanye clones, butt monsters, sexy dominatrix robots, computer nerds, and crushy things all in a spaceship. Wow, that was really hard to say. So much stupidity in one sentence. The music for these stages isn't nearly as catchy as the Shack levels, and the level design is pretty mediocre overall. After getting through that, it's time to fight the final boss, Kanye himself. Or at least the floating head of Kanye. Like I said, this plot makes no sense, so 
it's best not to think about it. <laughs> Done. The fight itself is a bit more challenging than the normal bosses, just like with Yen Lo Wang, having a few more attack phases and health, but isn't too hard once you know what you're doing. With Kanye defeated and the Uranus Destroyer stopped, you've saved the day and are free to go back to Earth and solve more cases. Is it over? We finally done with the review. Are we good now? Are we done? No, no, no. No, 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 no. If I have to save you again, I'm shooting you. What happened again? <laughs> well, folks, that was Shaq Fu Legend Reborn. As a game, it's not bad. For the price, it'll keep you entertained for a few hours. A few more if you get the DLC, which is free, so there's really no reason not to. If they ever release the co-op, or already have, then grab your friend and whoop some demon ass together. Despite not taking that long to beat, I found myself coming back to this game to replay a few stages, so I guess it at least has some replayability. The real question is, did this game achieve what it set out to do? Did this game replace the stigma of the original game? I'd say so. All glitches, cheap humor, repetitive controls, and broken hit detection aside, A Legend Reborn is still a pretty amazing experience, especially when you consider that it was crowdfunded. It's not the most hilarious game out there, but if you like the game's type of humor, it'll be Shaq-tacular. That's why I'm giving Shaq-Fu a Legend Reborn a 7 out of 10. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed.